Welcome to Crowhurst Christian Healing Centre. My name is Steve and I serve on the chaplaincy team here. Traditionally on a Thursday we hold a public healing service, but that is not possible at this time. We are inviting you to join us uh, to reflect on scripture, to uh, be still in the presence of the Lord and to share some prayer time together. We will do that week by week and that too will be available um, recorded online for you to access. Today I begin with the symbolism of a lighted candle. Jesus says in John chapter 8 verse 12, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Jesus also says in Matthew chapter 5 verse 14 that you are the light of the world. And we learn from these two scriptures that those who follow Jesus need never walk in darkness. In fact, they reflect something of his light and his life. So for a few moments, I'm going to play some music and uh, give you the opportunity to, to, to still yourself in the presence of the Lord, reflect on the, the lighted candle, the light of Christ and, and your light shining in the darkness and um, just enjoy this uh, moment together. Let us pray. We meet in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, your Son Jesus Christ promised to be with us always, and we believe that he is present with us now. Holy Spirit, we ask please that you would open the eyes of our hearts and the ears of our hearts that we may see and hear Jesus and experience something of his presence in a greater reality even now, even today. That the Father would be glorified, that the Kingdom of God would reign and increase more and more. Have your way among us, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. As I've been praying in uh, preparation for today, I felt uh, prompted to, um, to use a very familiar passage, but only a very short part of it um, for our reflection this morning. It's from the Good News of St. John, John chapter 4, verses 4 to 10. Now Jesus had to go through Samaria. So he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. 
It was about noon. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God, and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. Lord, we pray, bless this word to our hearts, and to our homes, and to our communities, and to our country. For Jesus' sake. Amen. I'm calling this reflection, Jesus embraces social distancing. There is a, a lot uh, online um, along the lines of Jesus and social distancing, but I'm calling it Jesus embraces social distancing. Jesus uh, seems in this passage to go out of his way to uh, spend some time with somebody who clearly has chosen to distance herself from her community. Uh, notice that uh, Jesus is on his way from Jerusalem to Galilee and uh, he chooses to go through Samaria. This, um, this is a no-no for Jews uh, who won't have anything to do with Samaritans anyway. And uh, during their walk they arrive uh, um, at this well, Jacob's well, and the disciples go off to a village to find some food and Jesus is, is left there on his own and a woman approaches. Um, so we have a Samaritan here, uh, a Samaritan woman, and we have a Jew in the person of Jesus. Jesus was tired, he was thirsty, he needed a drink, and he didn't have what would be required to get water from the well. So he does an unusual thing. He embraces social distancing. And he says to this uh, Samaritan woman, give me a drink, please. And the Samaritan woman, obviously, and not surprisingly, um, is really taken aback. And, and she questions Jesus, you know, why, why are you asking me for this? You are a Jew, I'm a Samaritan, I'm a Samaritan woman. Um, why ask me? And as I've already said, Jesus was simply asking because he was thirsty and needed, needed a drink. But something's happening at another level here. The opportunity for this woman who is here in the midday sun, which is a clue that she has chosen to distance herself from her community, that Jesus is taking the opportunity to meet this broken woman, this wounded woman, and begin a conversation. And it's probably one of the longer conversations in the Gospels, and I encourage you to, to read it further if you like. I'm just focusing on these couple of verses this morning. Jesus asks her for a drink because he needs a drink. He knows things about her, and he knows how he can meet her and transform transform her situation. Please may I have some water. Why are you asking me for my help? She says. Jesus in traditional uh, Jewish fashion turns the, turns the situation around and, and uh, puts the question in a sense back to her and says, if you knew the gift of God, if you knew the gift of God, and what he has to offer, you would be asking me for living water. I don't want to go any further than that, because my point today is that Jesus enters the scenario of those who have, for 
reasons best known to themselves or in our situation, because it has been placed on us by government regulation, um, we, are, uh, we are in the stay-at-home policy time. And, uh, and social distancing is, um, is declared wherever we go. But I think, as Jesus used this opportunity here, so Jesus would use this opportunity to come into your home, to meet you maybe in a queue outside the supermarket, and to begin a conversation. I suspect, and this may surprise you as it surprises me, Jesus may need your help. Jesus may need my help. Jesus calls us to follow him so that we may cooperate with him to bring about his kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. And certainly it transformed this woman's life. From a wounded place, a broken place, she suddenly rushes back to her village and says, come see a man who has told me all about my life. No longer is she um, wanting to hide from them. She's found her true identity um, in him. She's found who he is, who Jesus is. And that has transformed her life because she's seen who she is in his eyes. And uh, that makes all the difference. He asked her for help and uh, the opportunity for a conversation was, uh, was then unfolded. I'm reminded of, uh, uh, of another great woman of uh, God uh, um, who's been canonized recently, um, who as well, after 18 years of being a nun and um, already being in the service of the Lord, um, felt that the Lord met her on a train. She was on her way to a retreat. It was um, in September of 1946. And she felt the Lord say to her, Teresa, I thirst. Much like Jesus said to this woman at the well. And she saw in that moment that Jesus was asking her, to quench the thirst of those who had no water. And uh, what, what unfolded from there was the, the missionary charities, the, 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 mis uh, the, uh, the work that she began and, um, and went on to become known all over the world, winning the Nobel Peace Prize and to be canonized today as uh, Saint Teresa. But it was because she heard that the Lord had need. And I just simply want to leave you um, with that thought, that Jesus is present. You don't need to strive to find him. You don't need to strive to, uh, to hear him. Um, we, we just need to, to be able to still ourselves enough to allow him to say what he wants to say to allow him to speak into our situation. And, uh, and the situation um, demands, in a sense, that we find out how we can, how we may be able to, um, to help. And there's loads of work going on. And we have applauded, um, we've clapped for the carers of the NHS, and we, we applaud all those who are helping in our communities. In the Crowhurst um, village, we have a support group um, who are helping throughout the village. And, um, and I, say, I see that as the work of the compassion of God, just um, uh, sweeping across the nation as a wave. But I think there may be specific things that Jesus needs us for at this time. And, uh, and rather than um, I experienced on, uh, on Tuesday evening when our fire alarm went off at quarter past one in the morning and I came charging over here to, um, uh, to sort it out and to deal with the fire brigade and, uh, and, and went home um, rather frustrated um, and rather, have, um, rather than having that experience of just running headlong um, um, to, to do what we can which is our natural ability. We naturally want to help people. We naturally want to, to do things. Um, uh, rather than doing that, um, let us also take, um, take some time to engage in a conversation with Jesus, to hear what he, would, um, what he needs from us and how that may um, be turned into um, 
a transforming experience for our lives, but it also may be transforming for a village as it was in the experience of uh, this Samaritan woman, because the whole village came to recognize who Jesus was and to believe that Jesus is Savior. So I'm going to play um, a bit more music now, give us the opportunity just to be still for another short moment. And then um, I'd like to, to pray together with you. As I prepare, I feel the, um, the Lord has specifically given me four groups of people that He would, um, he would like me to specifically pray um, for and with today. Firstly, all of those, all of us, you and me, who um, are, are under this regulation, stay at home. All of those of us who are needed to self-isolate or at least practice social distancing, everybody that is involved in this. Uh, I was reminded of a great hymn by Henry Francis Light um, based on Psalm 67 and I just want to pray the first verse of that hymn for you and for me in our homes. God of mercy, God of grace, show the brightness of your face. Shine on and in our homes. Saviour, shine. Fill them with your light divine and thy saving health extend unto earth's remotest end. Amen. And of course we may personalize that and say, God of mercy, God of grace, show the brightness of your face, shine on me in my home, Saviour shine, fill me with your light divine, and extend to me your saving health, that I may live today and till my end with you. Amen. And then three other groups uh, of people and, um, and it's those folk who are doubly locked in, who, are, um, who have chosen to isolate themselves as this woman has from their communities for whatever reason, but then have uh, found this regulation and placed on, part of, on, put on top of them as well. So not only have they chosen themselves to stay at home, but then they've been told to stay at home. And it's almost like a double lock-in. And there are three specific groups of people. <clears throat> Firstly, those who have chosen to isolate themselves because of shame, because their reputation is in tatters, and they would rather not be seen by their communities. So, um, just a prayer for those. And I'm reminded of um, the name of God, Jehovah Kadesh, the Lord who sanctifies us, the Lord who sets us apart, the Lord who makes us holy. So, um, a prayer for you. Jehovah Kadesh, the one who sets us apart, I am tired, Lord, of, uh, 
of having to exclude myself because I'm ashamed of my reputation. I'm ashamed of things I have done. And Lord, I know that you and you alone can free me from that shame. And uh, as the Samaritan woman found her identity in you and grew confidence to, uh, to go back into her village, whatever her state, I pray, Lord, for all those who may be listening now, who may be watching now, that they may experience something of your setting them apart as your son, as your daughter, and may enjoy the freedom of the sons and daughters of God. Amen. And then for those who um, who've had to who've had to exclude themselves because of health. And there are a number of folk uh, who I know personally and uh, I suspect many who are watching who even before we were told to stay at home were having to stay at home because of their own health situation. And I want to call out to Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, the healer. I am the Lord who heals you, uh, the Lord says. So I just want to pray a prayer for you. Lord, how long, how long, Lord, do these folk need to suffer? How long, Lord? You are the healer. And I ask, please, Lord, that you would extend your hand of healing right now to all of those who have to stay at home, who may be um, confined to bed in hospital or in a home or um, in their own home. And that, Lord, you would meet them with your with your healing peace, with your healing comfort, with your healing hope. And Lord, that you would transform their situation by your hand. In Jesus' name. Amen. And then there's just one last uh, group that I feel specifically led to pray for today. Those who um, are in some form of captivity due to the lies of the world, the lies um, that they maybe have told themselves, or maybe the lies of the enemy. And I'm reminded of uh, the name Jehovah Roy, the Lord is my shepherd. And of course we, we read in Psalm 23 that the Lord sets a table in the company of, of our enemies. And so be reminded today that you sit a table with the Lord your enemies may be there, but you're at the table with the Lord. And recognize who you are um, in the Lord's eyes. Not in the words of the enemy, not in the words that maybe have been spoken over you. Um, be released from those words in Jesus' name. And uh, let me pray with you as well. Jehovah Roy, the Lord our Shepherd, we place our hands in your hands today, Good Shepherd. And we ask that we would recognize how you look at us and how you see us. And that we would hear the words that would be affirming from you, the words that would be loving from you, the words that would be uplifting and building from you. And that we would be released from those words that um, have wounded us and, and beaten us up again and again and again. Lord, bring peace and healing and release to those who are in captivity to lies. Today, I pray. Amen. And then, uh, to finish off, a, um, a word of blessing. A blessing that I love to... Uh, pray on the congregations um, here who, um, who come and um, enjoy the worship in, at our public services. And then I'll uh, just play out with some, some music. So receive this blessing. It's from, um, it's the Aaronic blessing um, from Numbers chapter 6, uh, which many of you will be uh, familiar with. The Lord bless you and keep you. 
The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. In the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Stay well. Thank you for sharing this time uh, with us. And um, Jesus may embrace social distancing, um, but I would encourage you uh, in as strong words as I possibly can. Social distancing and staying at home um, is the best possible thing that you and I can do um, to be uh, um, looking after ourselves, looking after our neighbors and uh, protecting the, the NHS. Um, so please abide by those regulations. Um, I want to share good news with people and uh, this is a great platform to be able to do it. Folk, whenever we pray, whenever we ask Jesus to, to do something, and we have done today, um, there is plenty of opportunity for him to, to encounter and to do the things that he wants to do. And as you and I engage in conversation with him today and in the days that follow, um, things, may, things may come out of those uh, conversations and there may be something um, of, uh, of a deeper and richer experience of the presence of, um, of his healing love uh, because he loves you and he loves me. And, and we want to share that news, we want to share that good news. So, so please write in and share something of your experience of, uh, of the encounter with the Lord and, uh, um, and the response to the, that you have um, enjoyed um, as a result of, of our praying. And the, um, the, the nearly 300 people who are praying for you today, just from um, those who network with us, and the Lord Jesus who prays for you himself. Um, please send in um, those words of, um, of that experience so that we can, we can share them, we can make them go public and, uh, and, and share good news with people um, during this season. So thank you for listening. Uh, stay at home, um, keep your distance and um, may God bless you um, in this week ahead. Goodbye.